Namaste and I'm just on my channel again. Um, sorry, there's a bit of a wing today, so you might not be able to hear me properly. Um, well, today I, I'm going to take you to um, Air Museum. Uh, it's somewhere I've never been before. Yeah, um, talking about the museum, um, it, it, it's an Army Air Corps museum. Good thing is, because uh, I'm a squatty, uh, I don't have to pay. Uh, that's one thing I've always find it really amazing about uh, uh, being a squatty. Um, so, uh, ideally you would pay around 15 quid, I think. Um, but then, because I'm a service personnel, uh, it does uh, work. Um, really well, so I'm not, I'm paying nothing to be fair. 
and I can visit this any time of the year as long as it's open, as long as I, I pre-booked pre it. Um, prior to the COVID, um, you, you wouldn't have been this bad where you gotta rearrange everything. You could just walk up to the camp. Uh, you could also take it dependent. So if my missus wasn't working last night, she could have um, come with me. She could have joined with me, so as my kids. Um, so they do like, look after the families uh, and their welfare. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Um, and um, pre-booking is pretty straightforward. Uh, but if you're a squatty, uh, it, it, it gives you, uh, there's a link where you could go to the link um, and then use a code. But on the day, you can actually prove yourself that you're squatty. Um, and I always carry my Mod 90. Uh, so basically, Mod 90, if you're not, uh, if you're not part of the um, UK, uh, part of the military in the UK. So Mod 90 is your military identification uh, uh, card. So that's what it is. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show my Mod 90, um, have a quick tour, uh, see what it's like. And, and if it's really, really worth it, but maybe during a uh, summer holiday, I'm gonna bring the missus and the kids. At my back, that's where the museum is. You can hear some um, aircraft in the background. It's literally coming from that, that corner. On the far end, somewhere there, is the air traffic control. Yeah. And, all right, there it says. So the opening hours are, I want to see this Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. Oh, so you could do fly picking as well. Uh, obviously, a lot of the places they don't allow dogs unless it's a guide dog. Right. Right. As you can see, uh, there are different charges. So that looks more like a cafe. Uh, I don't know what it is, but. There's something that flew somewhere over there. Yeah, anyways, all right, let's get in. It's a massive vendor. So you're currently here on the level above Hall 1 and Hall 4 yeah. and you work your way around to the back hall, uh -huh. down through the ramp into Hall 1 and in the corner of Hall 1 there's a red and yellow helicopter yeah. and that will take you through to Hall 2, Hall 3 and then Hall 4. Nice hall 3 one. is the aircraft carrier, the, the flight deck of the aircraft carrier, but the island can't go up to the island okay. because that's closed. It's too small for everybody. Oh, right. Not because no we don't want you up there. It's too small. <laughs> we don't want you up there. But yeah. for that reason, because it is too small. Yeah. And um, so, and then you go through to Hall 4, 
where Concord is, and then you can come back up the steps, or yeah. you can go up the lift and come up the lift here. No but basically, don't go that track. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll pull it aside. Cheers, thank yeah, you. Cheers, nice to see you. Nice one. Yeah, that was a really good uh, brief tour. Um, so these are the stuff that uh, the Apollo wears. And as, you, as she said, so you gotta follow the sign. It's pretty straightforward. So why does the Navy fly there? Now, this makes sense. Fly high, see far. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? So anyone watching this, uh, if you get a Royal Navy background or the military background, do let me know. And if you have been to uh, the Air Museum before, let me know as well. What do you like? What do you, what do you don't like about it? Drop it on the comment. So if you look here properly, it says British Pioneer and the White Brothers back in 1909. This was one of the um, recommend campaigns on the poster that they were using back in uh, 1914. In fact, it says here as well. So at, at the moment, all of these aircraft are grounded. So they're not in operation, but these are the ones uh, that actually works. Uh, me far bro, but uh, yeah. They done their service and they are here. But the future proof that uh, we could tell our kids. Oh, the, Oh, when we look back into history, we know that this is what you, we used to have it. Yeah, so again, it's the future proof. That's what the aircraft looks like. And, um, yeah, that's where your parlor and uh, core parlor are going to be. Uh, definitely not for me. There's too many bottles to play around with. Yeah. I think that hatch, you can see that's where they do upshelling. So if they need to lower anything or uh, get down and then bring stuff while they're still on the flight, uh, that's the hatch they use. Uh, I don't know what exactly this is, but it, it looks like if, if you can think about any movie, military movie, um, that mainly looks like for the communication side. Your comms man will sit here, do his bits. That looks like more for the navigation man. Maybe the navigation uh, elevation arrows and all the good stuff. Because uh, it's a rescue uh, aircraft, so they're gonna stretcher, and that's what it looks like from the other side. Some more information. This one, go links. See, so all this touch screen tells you uh, all the good stuff. Feel free to go to one of these and get all the information. Look at the engine. Look at those propellers. It looks like uh, the wooden one. And also on the end, uh, they got brass coating on each end. They gotta be from the early generation. But that bad boy, uh, it's a short S27. That's definitely gonna be amongst the very earliest aircraft. Uh, I mean, it won't be anything earlier than what Wright Brothers did, but yeah, that definitely looks like uh, the one from uh, early, early generations. So everything over here calls the military uh, and the historic value. So these were uh, the early generations of um, military boats for uh, the pilot in the Royal Army Air Corps. Uh, their medals, uh, those are like a like head over. Uh, it's great that back, even back in the days they had uh, some form of air defense. That's what it looks like. Or it's going to be uh, a headset for comms. 
actually that thing uh, actually reminded me when I was in Africa. Uh, we used to write a letter, uh, but then um, in my days it was a uh, Blu-ray, um, something to do with blue. Basically, you could you handwrite it, uh, and then uh, it gets uh, sealed and posted to your family back home. This was back in 2007. But when I went to the second time, um, what we did was uh, we, we had access to the computer. So we used to write everything on the computer. Once we press send, um, uh, it used to get sealed, typed, typed and sealed and sent it to your family by your close uh, welfare services. So those were really good. So see the advancement in uh, technology and the system within the military that's super good over the years. Again, because of COVID, uh, everything is one way system, as you can see over here. So. That's my way to hall two and three. So this looks like one of those uh, things from your submarine, I think. Uh, either way, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely from the submarine. This thing here, they have to walk like a bit of And that's how they used to, uh, even being under the water, they used to see things. Torpedo. So the torpedoes are the warheads. Uh, these are like massive uh, the bombs. Uh, uh, they they're they using submarines. So I'm guessing that's gonna be uh, Royal Enfield. So if you look into the history, uh, uh, the history says back. Uh, back in the, uh, the World Wars, they used to use one of these bikes, uh, especially to cascade the masses, because uh, our comps weren't that great at the time, uh, to deliver the post uh, to all the frontline warriors, and they get also to deliver the orders. You know, one thing I like about uh, living in Inter and the military is safety first. Someone who's got an uh, engineering background, they would know about it. Uh, yeah. But this is proper messed up, proper complicated uh, wires everywhere. Right now, we're going to push all three with the carrier. Started from 1910 and goes all the way. There's an the wall wall as well. There are the wall wall that corner. Not sure whether it's for the aircraft or for the ship. Uh, but that's where it holds all your uh, rounds, I guess. These are quite clever. You kind of move. So elevation wise and direction wise, that's how they work. Uh, they plan their wars. Let's see where all the people are. I really like the way the whole thing has been set up. Um, so I, I think this is to give you possibly the, the underwater team. Uh, and it's pretty well done. And bear in mind, everything is inside the hangar. So the way they have worked, uh, lay out the hangar, it's pretty cool. Uh, they have made three, three, uh, in fact, four different halls. So you got hall one, hall two, hall three, and hall four. And each hall tells you its unique uh, story.
and that's our way to all four and you see. So here we go, all four. Pretty amazing. So when I booked the tour, um, I, I didn't really thought about there will be so much contain on it. Um, I've heard about it, but I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. But it's definitely a, a day out, a whole day out. And, and even if you have to pay the money, it's definitely worth it. So this thing looks like a bit of a modern warfare. Modern warfare. But yeah, it's, it was an era between uh, the CS95 and MTP. So we used to wear the desert kit. So as you can see, he's wearing a desert version. Uh, it looks like a GPMU. It looks like it. And there's more uh, inside. Yeah. And also, he's still got an old school helmet. It's going to be a uh, Mark 6. So he's a marine commander. Yeah, he gets a lot when you look into it. So he's got it, uh, so that's the UK, that's part of what we are. That's his service number, I guess. So right now we we are going to, to drop in uh, the hangar and see uh, the overall view of the whole aircraft and the level four in general. And that's the view. So right now we are next to the Concorde, which is that thing over there. Um, it's super big. Uh, Looks like we can actually access the Concorde. Uh, so I'll give you an exclusive view. So if we can't get in, in that part of the cockpit. So this bit looks like more for your signal man. Or in fact, it could be more for your navigation man to work his way. So, even back then, they actually thought about the emergency oxygen bottles uh, for the crews. So imagine you've got a fault line. Yeah, good luck with that. I look like a power story. That was me finishing off the whole tour. Um, it's a must visit. Uh, I know uh, you may have to pay a bit of a uh, price for it, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, it's one of the places where you do not want to miss, especially if you are to uh, uh, aircraft uh, and the military on the history as well. Uh, I'll show you the fair uh, again, admission fair again. As you can see, uh, there's a various different charges for uh, various uh, uh, group of people. That's where it is. Uh, they got various locations as well. The one I just visited is in Yorton. They got one in Belfast, uh, Portsmouth, uh, Hartley Pool as well. So yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's me for today.